My name is Alex, and I'm here to tell you about something cool that we've been working on in the TensorFlow team for the past few months. This is mostly work done by Google Brain in Cambridge, and I'm here presenting because, well, I'm not in Cambridge. <laughs> uh, so this project is called Autograph, and what it is is essentially a Python compiler that creates TensorFlow graphs for you. So I'm sure, I've, since you've walked into this room, you've probably used TensorFlow before, and you might have some idea about how it works. And the way it works under the hood is you build this graph that represents your computation. And here there's like a multiply, an add, and a relu. This is a very simple neural network. And the nice thing about having a TensorFlow graph is that once you have this graph, you can deploy it to a server, you can train it on a TPU, you can run it on your mobile phone with TensorFlow.js, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. You have, we have compilers that take these graphs and produce highly optimized code for all sorts of platforms. The downside of this graph is that you end up writing code like this, which you see five lines of code, one of which has the actual computation that you want to run, and in case you're too poor to read, is like the fourth one. Uh, everything else is boilerplate. And some of this boilerplate is easy to deal with, like these placeholders, but some of the boilerplate is not. For example, if you want a model, a TensorFlow model that has control flow inside the model, you kind of have to take your mental idea of what code you want to write, which probably looks like the example on the left, where you know you have a Python if, and turn it into the code on the right, which is what we need to generate a graph. And the reason why we need this is that our computation graph, because it can be put on a TPU and put on a phone and run independently of the code that produced this graph, has to have information about both branches of your conditional. So we need to somehow tell TensorFlow everything that could possibly happen in this program and so you end up with code that's like very redundant in this way. And we have answers for this, and we're working hard to make your life easier if you want to use TensorFlow. One project that I've spent a lot of effort personally on is eager execution. And the idea of eager execution is that make your life easier by saying you don't have to do graphs at all. And you can take this idea fairly far, but eventually you hit some limits. Right? If you're with eager execution enabled, you have a very intuitive interface. You just write Python code. You use Python control flow, Python data structures, all the things you're already familiar with, and it's nice. But you don't get this automatic parallelism and distribution and scale that Frank was telling you about with all the TPU pods, because you, you still have to run Python code. And processors aren't getting faster, and Python is inherently single-threaded. We have a few ways of getting around this, like, from eager execution, we have defund, this primitive that lets you build little graphlets and run them. So within that graphlet, you have all the performance of graph mode, but you still can have eager execution in your outer loop. We can also have Python, which lets you have a full graph code that can run on like clusters of multiple GPUs, but with eager code in the middle that's doing some complicated control flow stuff. And these tools are useful. Like both Dfun and Pyfunk are differentiable. They, are, they run on all sorts of devices. They give you a lot of flexibility. But it's a little unsatisfying that you have these seams in your program and you need to think about what's going to be a graph, what's not going to be a graph. What if we could do better than this? And Autograph is this tool that we've been working on in the Google Brain Cambridge office that tries to do better than this. And what it lets you do is write eager style Python code and have a compiler turn this into the boring, uh, very complicated graph style code. Because if you think with me for a second, if you look at the transformations that need to happen to turn the code on the left into the code on the right, that looks like something that can be automated. And Autograph is indeed the thing that automates this transformation. It's pretty easy to use now. It's in TensorFlow Contrib, and when 2.0 comes out, it will be in core. You just import autograph from contrib, and you decorate your function with autograph.convert. Then when you call it, under the hood, autograph will generate and run this more complicated fo code for you. And these are not like academic concerns. There's a lot of code out there that has control flow in it. So for example, the implementation of dynamic RNN in TensorFlow is very hard to read if you're not familiar with how TensorFlow works. But I can write one here in the slide, and it's pretty easy. If you squint, you have a for loop that loops over the, my sequential data, applies an RNN cell, and it has some logic in it to mask the outputs because the different sequences in the mini batch can have different lengths. But this is not, this is 11 lines of code. There's no magic here. But if you run it through Autograph, you get 
the actual code that you see inside tf.dynamicRNN, which is substantially harder to read. And not just RNNs, and this, I mean, this RNN is a built, basic building block that we use in all sorts of sequence-to-sequence -sequence models when we're generating text, when we're generating images, when we're turning uh, data into other data. And this is just one example of this kind of control flow rich programs that you often want to write, but that writing in normal graph tensor flow can be more painful than it needs to be. So what Autograph supports is a subset of the Python language that covers what I hope is what you most need to run in a TensorFlow program. So we can do print, and I don't know how many of you have ever failed to use tf.print, because I do about once a week. It's really hard, right? Uh, also, tf.assert, it's very easy to have your assertion silently dropped in the void. Uh, it, Autograph is also composable, so you can have arbitrary Python code with classes and functions and complicated call trees, and we'll turn the whole thing into a graph for you. You can have nested control flow with breaks and continues and all sorts of stuff, and we can make that work. And we're still working on it to make it better. So uh, another nice example, I think, to like visualize what Autograph is actually doing is using what has been unanimously decided to be the best interview question in the history of humanity, which is Fizzbus. This thing where like you loop for all the over the numbers and you print Fizz for some of them, Buzz for some of them, Fizz Buzz for some of them, and otherwise you just increment your counter and print the number. And you can see this is like 10 lines of Python code, pretty straightforward, but if you try to turn it into TensorFlow code, and we ran it through Autograph because I'm too lazy to write this code myself, it's not pretty. And if you think this is it, this is not. This is it. <laughs> uh, so this all looks nice, but I think you would be remiss to believe me if you didn't understand how this works. So I want to spend a few minutes and tell you what we're actually doing to make this possible. And there's many ways of conceptualizing this, but I think really the core of Autograph is we're extending the notion of what's possible with operator overloading. And I don't know if you're familiar with operator overloading. It's a feature in Python that lets you kind of customize a little bit of the language. And we use this heavily in TensorFlow. So for example, when you write C equals A times B in TensorFlow, uh, we don't actually run the Python multiplication operator. What actually runs is the thing on the right, C equals TF dot multiply A comma B. And the way we turn one, the code on the left into the code on the right is by having this tensor class where A and B are tensors. This tensor class defines this underscore underscore mole method which Python, then, when it sees the operator, it rewrites to a call to the multiply method. And then we can use this multiply method to make whatever code we want run when you type the star. And this is pretty straightforward and shouldn't be like a big of a surprise. But what Python doesn't let you do is this. Like, there's no way in Python to override the behavior of the if operator to run some code you want to run. So ideally, if Python let us override underscore underscore if, we would be able to make all sorts of like graph rewrites that take control flow into consideration. Sadly, we can't. Uh, so what we're trying to do really is override the syntax that Python doesn't let us override the syntax. And the way we do this is we read the Python abstract syntax tree of your code uh, we process it using Python's AST modules, and we just run a bunch of standard compiler passes. We rewrite loops so that they have a single exit. We capture all the variables that you assign in loops and conditionals. We unify the variables that you mutate in either branch of a conditional. We do all these like boring transformations that need to happen so that we can take the code that you want to write that has advanced control flow into the code that TensorFlow wants you to write. And if you've been following me so far, you might have a question in your head, which is that if you've written TensorFlow program, Autograph didn't exist. You look at your code, it's full of ifs and while loops, right? And for loops and things like that. And you probably don't want any of those things to end up in a graph. Because it, a lot of this is just configuration. You're choosing what optimizer to use, or you're choosing how many layers your network has. And you have these things are very easy to express in loops. But if we, you might think that if we rewrite every loop and conditional in your code to be a TensorFlow loop or conditional, you're going to end up with all those things in your graph. And you don't. And the way you don't is pretty clever, which is that we use Python's dynamism to help us instead of hurt us. So when we rewrite the, to, in our like, operator overloaded logic with underscore, underscore, if, and underscore, underscore, while, we don't call tf.cond. 
we call something that in spirit looks like this function, where if you pass it a tensor, it runs tf.cond, but if you pass it something that's not a tensor, it runs a normal Python conditional. So if you have code that's not TensorFlow code and you run it through Autograph, we should preserve its meaning, preserve its semantics. So it should be safe, and you can trust that it will only change the behavior of code that you want the behavior to change because it's doing something that you're not allowed to do, like have an if that depends on the value of a tensor at graph build time. And to get there, we had to do a lot of work, and a lot of work that, as I was saying, is the same work that any compiler has to do. We, we figure out what variables you're using, we rewrite things in a single static assignment form so that we can handle things like breaks and continues and breaks inside ifs and functions with multiple return points because the tensor, core TensorFlow syntax doesn't let you have those things, but thankfully, that is just syntactic sugar. It's just like simple transformations that you can do on the, you can remove all these features by doing simple transformations on the code that do not affect its meaning. And in Autograph, we do those transformations for you. So you can really write the code that you want to write, and we'll try to run it as best as we can. So we do break and continue, inline if expressions. We're working on list comprehensions. We have basic support for for loops. Uh, we let you do multiple return statements. We also desugar for loops into while loops because we can, like TensorFlow, there's no tf.for loop, but Autograph implements tf.for loop for you. And a good way to think about what we're doing here is that we're adding another stage of processing in your computation. Like right now, if you're using TensorFlow from graphs, you write graph style code in Python, you give this to the TensorFlow runtime to execute it. What Autograph lets you do is write eager style code in Python, which is imperative, which has no control dependencies and all these things that you don't want to think about. And Autograph will go, turn this eager style code into graph style code for you, and then hand this over to the TensorFlow runtime. And again, if you're at all skeptical at this point, you're like, well, I've used TensorFlow before. I've seen what the error messages look like. If you're adding another layer of co computation, is that going to become even harder than it already is to debug what's going on? And I, the good news is that it doesn't have to. So if you think about it, we have these three stages of your computation now. We have autograph is processing your code. That's stage zero. Then stage one is your code is being run to generate a graph. And stage two is TensorFlow is executing your code to actually do the thing you want. If you get an error in stage zero, when Autograph is processing your code, you just get a stack trace that points to Autograph code. You file a bug on, against us on GitHub and we'll fix it. If you get an error during stage one, which is like the code that you wrote, well, the code that you, you wrote, that Autograph transformed into code that you don't know how to read because it's full of those, that extra boilerplate that you didn't want to deal with in the first place, and you get an error there, we actually rewrite the Python stack trace to point not to the generated code line that has an error, but to the line of code that you actually wrote so that you can like, connect your actions with their consequences instead of having this black box that deals with. And if you've used TensorFlow and you've seen the errors at runtime, we already show you two stack traces, one for when, you're, what, when the graph was built and another one for when the session.run was called. And in principle, we can also rewrite the stack traces here so that the graph was built stack trace shows the one the code you wrote, not the code autograph generated, and we're working on making this happen. So what's in the future of autograph? We have a public beta. It's in tf.contrib.autograph. We encourage you to try it. It's ready to use. If you find a bug, and I hope you don't, but if you find a bug, file something on GitHub. Let's work with us to get it fixed. Uh, as we, you might have seen that we are starting to announce a lot of our plans for TF 2.0. And one of our big things in TF 2.0 is that eager execution is going to be enabled by default. And to make, you, to make crossing the bridge between eager execution and graph deployability easier, Autograph will be a key part of this. So we would love to get this tested as much as we possibly can before TF 2.0 comes. Meanwhile, we're working on improving error handling, yes, but also improving, enhancing our co coverage of the Python language adding more and more and more operations to what Autograph supports so that you have to think less and less and less about how your code is going to be turned into a graph and more about what do you actually want your code to do in the first place. We also want to 
factor out the source code transformation bit into its own library so that if you have some Python project where you want to override underscore underscore if, you will be able to reuse our code to do that because it's a pretty neat self-contained little thing that I think can be useful broadly beyond the TensorFlow universe. So thank you for listening to me, but if strongly encourage you to go, open your laptops and do this. Google Autograph Colab and click on the first result or open this link here. This will point you to our notebook that's hosted on Google infrastructure so you can use our GPUs for free. And it has lots of little examples for how, like, here, this is code before autograph, this is code after autograph, this is what an error looks like. These are things we can do, and I think playing around with this can really help give you an idea that's a lot more concrete than what I've been talking about what are the actual capabilities of this technology. And I'm sure if you try this, you have a blast. Thank you. Oh, also, Frank and I are gonna be at the TensorFlow booth in the like sponsor area if you have any questions, even if you don't wanna ask them now. Okay, thank you. <laughs>